Welcome to a proof of the derivative of f of x equals arc cosecant x. We'll prove the derivative of arc cosecant x with respect to x equals negative one divided by the absolute value of x times the square root of the quantity x squared minus one. So to begin, we'll let y equal arc cosecant x, and notice in this equation, x would be the cosecant function value, and y would be the angle. And therefore it follows that cosecant y would equal x, where y, the angle, would be on the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, and y can't equal zero. y can't equal zero because, remember, where sine is equal to zero, cosecant is undefined. Because we know cosecant y is equal to x, if we want x over one, and cosecant theta is equal to the ratio of the hypotenuse to the opposite side, let's model y using a reference triangle. Notice how when the angle y is in the first quadrant, x would be positive, but when the angle y is in the fourth quadrant, x would be negative. And again, because cosecant theta is equal to the ratio of the hypotenuse to the opposite side, and we know the hypotenuse is always positive in a reference triangle, we'll label the hypotenuse the absolute value of x to assure that the hypotenuse is positive, and then we'll label the opposite side plus or minus one. We'd use negative one if x was negative, and we use positive one if x is positive. Then using the Pythagorean theorem, we can determine the adjacent side here would be equal to the square root of the quantity x squared minus one. And because the adjacent side of a reference triangle in the first and fourth quadrants is always positive, we know this is going to be the principal square root of the quantity x squared minus one. And also because cosecant y is equal to x and cosecant and sine are reciprocals of one another, we know that sine y is equal to one divided by x, we can use this fraction instead of plus or minus one divided by the absolute value of x. And since cosine theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, we know cosine y equals the square root of the quantity x squared minus one divided by the absolute value of x. And now for our proof, we take the equation cosecant y equals x and differentiate both sides with respect to x. And because we have an implicit equation, requires implicit differentiation. So when we differentiate the left side of the equation that contains y, we have an extra factor of dy dx. So the derivative of cosecant y with respect to x is equal to negative cosecant y times cotangent y times dy dx. And this is equal to the derivative of x with respect to x, which equals one. And now we're going to solve this equation for dy dx by dividing both sides by negative cosecant y cotangent y, which we see here. And then because one over cosecant y is equal to sine y, and one over cotangent y is equal to tangent y, we can rewrite this as negative sine y times tangent y, and since tangent y is equal to sine y over cosine y, we can write this product as negative sine y over one times sine y over one times one over cosine y, and now we'll perform a substitution for sine y and cosine y. Again, we know sine y is equal to one over x, so we have negative one over x times one over x times one over cosine y is a reciprocal of cosine y, which should be, which should be the absolute value of x over the square root of the quantity x squared minus one. And now this does simplify, notice how we do have a common factor of x, but before we simplify here, notice how x times x is always going to be positive, and of course the absolute value of x is also positive. So when we simplify and we have one remaining factor of x in the denominator, we do need to make sure that that x is going to be positive, so the extra factor of x becomes the absolute value of x. And we have our proof. dy dx is equal to negative one divided by the absolute value of x times the square root of the quantity x squared minus one. Notice how the derivative function value is always going to be negative, which means the slope of the tangent line to our function f of x equals arc cosecant x will always be negative, and the function is also always decreasing. And let's verify this graphically. Here's the graph of y equals arc cosecant x. Notice how for any point on our function, the slope of the tangent line would be negative, and the function is decreasing. I hope you found this helpful.